Hello and welcome to another episode of Ask the Experts. I'm Rachel Landry, and today I'm joined by my colleague Jeff Hatzel, a product manager here at the company. Jeff will be talking to us today about a tool that's new in the version 23.1 release of Global Mapper, the 3D Buffer Tool. All right, Jeff, take it away. Hi, Rachel. Thanks for having me back on Ask the Experts. So today we're going to take a look at um, some new functionality coming out with version 23.1 of Global Mapper, uh, and that's going to be to create three-dimensional buffers. Uh, so users who are familiar with buffers uh, will know that you know we can place a buffer of a certain distance around um, point, line, or area features. What 3D buffers now allow us to do um, is to add a third dimension to that buffer that normally is just a, a 2D feature. Um, so today we're going to look at some pipes that we converted from lines. We made a 3D buffer around a line to create some pipes and then a sphere, or in this case, half a sphere around a point so that we can look at um, some features of interest and in how they interact, visualize them in 3D. Uh, so the data I have loaded here, I have a, a terrain surface loaded for some reference. Um, these yellow lines represent um, segments of a sewer pipeline. And then the two red dots here are the manhole covers that we're interested in um, in association to these pipelines. Um, the general question being in this case, um, do we have the proper access and clearance around um, these manhole covers, which is a measurement of about 15 meters. So do I have 15 meters of clearance around these at the ground surface um, in relation to any buildings and trees in the area? Um, so for around those points, I also extracted some uh, 3D building footprints, and I did that um, from LiDAR data. And then same here, we can see these little um, lighter green classified trees from the LIDAR as well. So we'll use that as all part of our visual here um, to build what we see three-dimensionally. Um, it's worth noting in this case, all of these features have an elevation value associated with them. So the pipes, um, you know, we'll see they'll show up above ground. Um, and then obviously the manhole covers sit on the surface of the terrain where the at street level. So the first thing we'll do is go ahead and create the buffer for our manhole covers. So um, when we do this, we specify the styling. I'll just leave that as a transparent red and the radius we want for our sphere. So in this case, I'm gonna make mine at um, 15 meters to, to meet that clearance requirement. Uh, we don't have to clip it, but we can choose how we wanna clip this data set. So in this scenario, um, I care about what is above ground. So I'm gonna clip it at the terrain surface. So I'm not going to see anything below ground, uh, not necessary all the time, but in this scenario, um, applicable. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing here for the pipeline layer. And we'll notice, so we also have um, options to make cylinders. We're not going to look at that today, but you could make a, a vertical cylinder around a feature, um, whether that's a, a line or an area feature, maybe you're, you know, buffering um, a building footprint or something like that. You could, you could build a buffer that way too. We're just going to go ahead and make a pipe here. Um, I made these a little earlier. I made them as an opaque yellow, and I can set the radius of that pipe to match the radius of the, the feature in real life. In this case, they're about six feet across. So I set that to two meters and you can always adjust your units here as well. So once that's done, uh, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at all of this in 3D. So that process creates two mesh features. Um, and for those of you who are familiar with a 3D mesh, um, in the 2D view, right, we don't really see much of use. We're looking at it top down. And essentially what we're seeing here is just the structure of the mesh feature itself. So the, in, for the sphere, we can really see, you know, our triangular faces that make up that mesh. Um, but let's zoom out a little bit and we'll pop open 3D and see what these look like. So now looking at an oblique view in 3D, um, so my buildings, right, are, are three-dimensional and they just have a, a roof height applied to them. Um, we can see my tree point clouds as well. We'll move over to get a quick look. Um, right at these trees in this region as well. And what we care about now, so our pipelines are running under the surface. 
Um, we can see if I can line it up properly. Maybe we'll even be able to see through the pipe. It's a little trickier to do though here, um, but we can see the, the diameter of the pipe set from what I set in the tool and it's properly showing up um, underground. Now, more important, what we care about is the sphere here. Um, so as I zoom in and take a look at one of these spheres, I can see that it has the uh, diameter that, that we specified. It exists only above the terrain surface. And what I care about then is um, how it interacts with the features uh, adjacent to it in that 15 meter um, buffered area. Right, so this site I would say looks like there's certainly some tree overlap and maybe a little edge of building overlap here as well. If we take a look at the other feature, um, our other manhole cover, you know, the trees do, don't seem to be crossing the sphere, but certainly a couple corners of buildings are in, you know, encroaching into my 15 meter clearance area. Uh, and so obviously we're not going to go and move a building, um, but we certainly want to send a crew here, maybe clean up these trees and get a better feel for, um, you know, do we have an issue if we ever need to bring in any heavy equipment to service these manholes and get, you know, construction equipment down in there? Are those buildings going to be in the way? And, um, you know, do we need to account for those at all? So a really great way to make um, and, you know, further build a, a complete 3D perspective of our workflows and our workspaces and what we're trying to accomplish. Just like all features in Global Mapper, Rachel, these meshes can be exported directly out of the application um, to any format that we support. So just to take a look at that quick, um, I'm choosing to export my pipe features. I can choose anything that'll hold that three-dimensional feature um, can be exported out of the application as well. So thanks again for having me back on Ask the Experts, and uh, I hope this was a useful workflow for you. Jeff, thank you so much for showing us how to use the new 3D Buffer tool. I know that our users will be utilizing it in their workflows shortly. And thank you to the audience for joining us today for this episode of Ask the Experts, and we hope that you'll join us for the next one.